If time travel is possible, why haven't we met a single time traveler yet? And if we did meet one, how would we know they weren't faking it? What would their time machine look like and how would it operate? Would there be a set of rules for time travelers to follow and what would happen if they decided to break them? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you met a time traveler in 1998. A gentleman by the name of John Titor arrived from the future, or so he said, in his timeline. As he claimed, General Electric had managed to invent time travel in the year 2034. He even showed and described his time-traveling device in great detail. Then Titor vanished as abruptly as he appeared. Did he finish his mission or was he real at all? How could we know? If we were able to prove that someone has traveled from a different time, it would be very cool for science, although it might overwrite Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein approached time as a fourth dimension. Space is a three-dimensional spectrum that provides us with length, width, and height. Time offers direction. Together, they form a space-time continuum and can be affected by gravity. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, gravity is a curve in space-time. Technically, because space and time are one, gravity could bend time as well as space. However, you'd need something really, really big to notice any changes in the movement of time. For example, if you somehow managed to get yourself close to a black hole like Sagittarius A, you'd be experiencing time at half speed compared to people on Earth. This is because Sagittarius A packs a mass of four million suns into an indefinitely dense point, creating a very strong gravitational field around it. Another way to travel in time is to move really fast. The closer you get to the speed of light, the slower time passes for you. For instance, if you were a passenger on a train that could travel at 99% of the speed of light, for every year you spent on the train, 223 years would have passed back at the station. This would make you a time traveler into the future. But what about traveling back in time, just like John Teeter said he did? Teeter claims that his time traveling device, the C204, made time travel possible in any direction. It allowed him to manipulate gravity with the help of two micro singularities packed inside it. The machine also had gravity sensors to lock the machine and time traveler in a fixed place in space. Titor had this machine installed in a car, much like the good old time traveling DeLorean, but it could only take him as far as 60 years from his time. How would you know that Titor was actually traveling in time and not just making it up? Proving that someone is a time traveler might be even harder than time travel itself. Time travelers could make predictions about the future, show their futuristic technology, or even undergo genetic testing to support their story. Perhaps the best way to prove time travel is real would be to take you with them on their next adventure. Of course, there are easier ways to prove the possibility of time travel. In 2009, the world-famous theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking threw a party to which only future time travelers were invited. Hawking didn't send off invitations until after the party, believing that if travelers from the future arrived before the invitations were released, that would prove time travel will become possible one day. However, nobody showed up, but that doesn't mean time travel is impossible. There is a chance that time travelers from the future will learn to use wormholes or bridges in space-time. Although we haven't seen one yet, the theory of general relativity predicts their existence. The biggest problem with wormholes is that they're microscopic and collapse too quickly for a human traveler to go through. Perhaps the reason nobody attended Hawking's party is that time traveling might not be that precise. Maybe the guests from the future did arrive, but they were too late for the party. Or maybe going back in time is strictly prohibited for time travelers because they might change their timeline completely. Perhaps they're trying to avoid the risk of spreading any diseases from the far future onto us. Alternatively, maybe the information about time traveling is so highly classified that only a few people would be trusted with it. Maybe traveling back in time isn't possible after all, and time can only move forward, never backward. Perhaps John Teeter was one big lie. We have a few more years until 2034 to find out. In a way, we already have time travelers in our lifetime. Astronauts on the International Space Station are moving at 8 kilometers per second, which makes them age slower. Although the difference is measured in hundreds of a second, if you're listening, you're invited to a reception for time travelers hosted by Stephen Hawking. The party took place at the University of Cambridge, United Kingdom on June 28, 2009, with no RSVP required. And hey, if you have a chance to jump in a spaceship and enjoy the time-traveling effects of a black hole, do it. Just make sure not to fall into that gravitational monster. But that's a story for another video.